Today we're talking about how you can take a hot, clean shower while being completely off the grid. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. We got another gear review for you guys today and a little bit of an announcement at the same time. In the very beginning of May, I'm going to be traveling again, no surprise there, but this time instead of doing it in the comfort of my van, I'm going to be taking out the Tacoma for, I don't really know how long, probably a month to a month and a half, possibly two months or maybe even longer. Definitely a month at minimum and that is sort of the reason why I've been testing out all of this gear battery packs, water solutions that we're gonna be talking about today. And I talk about this quite a lot, but I often like to test my gear here at home before I actually take it out into the wild to make sure that everything will work and I won't run into any hiccups if I'm out there testing something for the very first time. So I was thinking about traveling around in the truck and one thing that I would like to have is of course a way to shower. I could sort of bum around and visit friends and use their showers or stay in a hotel, but who wants to do that? I could also visit truck stop to take a nice hot shower, but I was doing some research online when I came across this product right here coming from Geyser Systems. This little unit right here will allow me to take showers completely off grid, sort of in the comfort of my own truck. You could really use this in any vehicle at any campsite, even if you're staying in just a regular tent. As long as you have a portable battery pack to power this thing, you could use it pretty much anywhere completely off the grid. Now I've been playing around with this thing for the past two weeks. I've been doing a little bit of testing here and there and I've actually showered with it one time. I really wanted to make sure that I was able to take a complete hot shower with this thing before taking it out and finding out that maybe it doesn't work for me. But so far all of my testing has been pretty good. So now we're gonna take a first look at it today. So the Geyser Systems hot portable shower and cleaning system should be a pretty good piece of gear to have with you, whether you are cleaning yourself, cleaning some gear, or maybe even cleaning some of your pets. This thing holds approximately three liters of water or 0.8 gallons. It has an onboard water pump and a water heater, and it's all contained in this nice, relatively small package. Now, one thing that sort of caught me off guard with this thing is the actual size of it. When you're looking at it in photos, it seems a little bit smaller. However, once I got it in person, you can tell just how big it really is. That's really not a deal breaker for me because it is relatively light and for dimensions, it's about 17 inches tall by nine inches wide and then seven inches deep back to the handle right here. It does include a 16 foot cord with some nice cable ties on there and this is basically how I've been stowing this thing when I'm not using it. It has a 12 volt car socket plug on here and this thing is removable with a little SAE connector here on the bottom. Now, as you can see on the bottom here, these things are assembled in Montrose, Colorado, which is now my home state. So it's pretty cool that I'm able to test out a product from a startup company here where I live. When I opened up the box, I did receive a little thank you card here. It says, from our Colorado startup, thank you. Together we're redefining what is possible for every sacred drop of water. If you experience any issues with your geyser, let us know, we have your back. I've actually heard of some other customers who picked some of these up and whenever they had an issue, they just called that number right here on the bottom and they were able to talk to a representative from Geyser almost immediately. Some of the owners of the companies were even taking phone calls to help troubleshoot people's issues that they may have been having with these things. But so far, I haven't had any issues. On the back here, they say we stand behind our product and a lot of people at the company and signed this note. So pretty cool little touch. It knows that you're working with a small business. And as you guys know, I of course love small businesses. So let's see in a little bit more detail some of the functionality of this thing. Starting up top on the right side chamber here is where you will find the lid and your actual water storage. Like I said, this holds about three liters or 0.8 gallons of water. And if you look down into the bottom there, you can actually see some of the heating elements. So far, this lid feels nice and secure and you will notice a little sensor on the back here. Once the lid is fully tightened, it actually has an LED indicator, which will tell you that the lid is properly secured. Now, speaking of the LED indicators, this thing is pretty simple. You have a few different lights to let you know the status of the geyser system. System. So on top, if the pump is too hot, that light will be lit and it will actually not allow it to pump water because it could end up scalding you. Down below that, when you're using the heating element, you will know when the water is up to temperature. This thing is able to heat water up to 100 degrees, which may not be ideal for most people, but it's definitely a warm shower. Some people like my girlfriend like taking scalding 
hot showers, but this thing won't allow you to burn yourself, which is a nice touch. Like I mentioned, I did shower with this thing already and 100 degree water was completely fine for me. Beneath that, you will have a blue indicator, which will tell you if the water temperature is below 100 degrees. And then below that, more LED indicators letting you know when the water is heating, when your lid is secured, when you have low water, that light will be blinking, and when the actual power to the unit is on. On the top here, you have a little switch cover. So if you flip that open, you can push it down to turn the pump on or push it up to turn the hot water heater on. Now in real time, I'm gonna show you guys how to set this thing up. Here is the included hose. On this side, you have a little gray nozzle, which I will clip into the top. On the other side, you have a control valve to control how much water you are actually using. I put a little Velcro zip tie on here because when I'm not using this thing, I actually store the hose inside the unit itself. So I will take the gray nozzle on this side, clip it into the top, it has a nice positive click on there. If you pull on that, you will know it's secure. Beneath that is a little yellow locking collar, so if I spin that counterclockwise, now that thing is locked into place and it will not come off. Now on the water control side, you will take one of their sponges, which are included. You can get three different color sponges. You got green, pink, and yellow. I've been using the yellow one for myself. Maybe you want to use the green one for dishes and maybe the pink one for my girlfriend. Now I will take the little nozzle on the sponge side and there is a little arrow found right here above my thumb. I will line that arrow up with the arrow on the hose side, click it down into place, and then turn it about a quarter turn to lock that thing into place. Now when I was using this thing, I had this sitting on the ground this hose will probably reach someone who's even over six feet tall so I think that is a pretty good length on there without having too much crazy excess cables like I mentioned the power cord is 16 feet long so if you're using this thing in your car you can plug it in and shower well far away from your car that way you're not splashing all over the place I will say though that using a sponge in this whole system it doesn't really splash around all that much so you should be able to use it inside of a camper inside of a van really wherever you see fit so to show you guys how this thing works, I'm just gonna be using a little portable power system now. This is basically what I've been using for testing. I actually did a review of these not too long ago. I will plug that thing into the car socket, turn on the power, and now we have lights on top. So this is letting me know that the power is on, the low water light is blinking because there's no water in here right now, and the lid is secure. So let's start by taking the lid off. I happen to have two liters of water right here and I'm spilling everywhere. All right, we had two liters of water, and then I just spilled it all over my table. All right, back to it. So we've got this thing filled up with water, about two thirds full, and I will go ahead and put the lid on. Now one tip that I will give you guys is to not put this lid on too tight. I basically tighten it until that lid secured light comes on and then just give it a little bit extra of a turn. You really don't wanna crank this thing on because once you are running the water pump, this sort of has suction inside of it. I made that mistake when I was showering with this for the first time and afterwards it was very difficult to get this lid off. So put that thing about hand, maybe finger tight. Just make sure that lid secure light is on and you should be ready to rock. Now when it comes to heating up this water, there are a few ways you can do it. If you're using just regular cold water, you can throw it in there and turn on the water heater. So I'll flip that switch up and flip that switch forward. Now the heating water light is on. It is currently below 100 degrees Fahrenheit because I'm just using regular tap water, basically cold tap water. So in one of the most extreme situations that you could have as far as getting your water hot is just straight up cold tap water. I tested this thing on a few different occasions with just regular cold tap water coming out of my sink. I did some testing today. It is currently about 20 degrees outside, so pretty cold. The tap water is pretty dang cold as well. And with just normal power, plugging this thing in, putting a cold water in here and turning the water heater on, it was able to heat up 0.8 gallons of water in roughly 40 minutes. Now the second way to heat up water would be just having warmer water to begin with. If you're filling this thing up at maybe like a truck stop or if you're just going into a rest station, you could carry this thing into the bathroom with you and fill it up with warm or hot water right out of the faucet. One thing to note is that you don't want to put scalding hot water in here because if you're starting with a completely empty chamber and you load it up with very hot water, it's going to disable that pump if it is over that threshold. I found that if I just ran some hot water for a little while, I could fill this thing up and it did not need any preheating. I just turned on the water heater and it already indicated that it was at temperature. It wasn't too hot and I was able to shower almost immediately. 
And then the next way to do this, if you are completely off grid, which this thing is of course used for, it would be to fill it up about two thirds full, the way I just did it here with cold water, room temp water. And then you can use something like a jet boil to boil just one more liter of water to top this thing off. And if you dump in boiling water on top of the already cold water, it's not gonna trip that pump sensor. So it should be able to work right away and you should have pretty warm water right from the get go. Putting in the cold water and turning on the heating element is obviously gonna use more power this is roughly drawing 115 to 120 watts. So if power is a concern for you, then definitely keep that in mind. I think in the future when I'm actually using this while I'm out camping, I'm just going to have some room temperature water and then maybe boil a little bit of water to dump on top. So now we've got water in here. You can choose to heat it up to whatever temperature you want to, or you could take a cold shower. So now it's time to see how this thing actually functions. I'm gonna put all that water back into here. We're going to start with the control valve in the closed mode. The sponge on here right now is completely dry. One tip that Geyser gives you, which I actually use when showering with this thing, is to put soap onto the sponge before you actually get started. That way it will absorb all that soap in there and it will create suds a little bit faster. They did actually include this Dr. Bronner soap in here, which is basically environmentally friendly. So if you're showering outside, you're not gonna be putting harmful chemicals into the environment. I thought that was a pretty cool touch. I haven't used this stuff yet, but once I'm showering, out of the truck then I will definitely do that. So now with the water valve closed we're going to turn the pump on. You heard that thing prime a little bit and because that valve is closed right now there is no water coming out of here. Now this control valve has sort of like little click adjustments to it so if I click it up one click you can hear that pump start to run. So now this thing is in its lowest setting, it will continue to pump water up here into the sponge. And if this was completely full, this would run for about 15 minutes. So as you can see, water is starting to drip out here. You basically let the sponge soak up all the water and then when you squeeze, that is how you are getting water to actually clean yourself. The next click is for a medium flow. So if I go one more click, you can hear that pump start to run a little bit more. This should allow you to run the shower for seven minutes. As you can see, a lot more water is coming out of there now. On the third click, this is now the high flow. It will allow you to shower for four minutes. And as you can tell, a lot more water is coming out of this sponge. And now the fourth click will be fully open and it will basically deplete your water in a minute. So the best way to do this would be to shower on the lowest setting, which is comfortable for you. And then once you are done showering, if you still have water left, then you can crank it open and just get a lot of hot water on you. Kind of refreshing and again that will only last for about one minute. So let's crank this thing all the way open and you can hear this pump. As you can see, ton of water coming out of here. Feels really good. It's nice and warm right now. The pump is a little bit noisy but that is kind of to be expected. It's just contained in the small unit. When I compare this to like showering in my van, the water pump in my van is still loud, but it's behind some cabinetry, so it's not quite as loud. If you're trying to be inconspicuous for some reason while you're showering, this will draw a little bit of attention because it does make some noise, but it's not a deal breaker for me. Now, one of the questions that I had was, how do you actually shower using this method with just like basically saturating a sponge and then wringing it out? You just like wring it out over your head or what's the best way to do this? My hair right now is pretty dang long. I of course have a long beard. So I first started up top on my head and I was basically just wringing out the water over my head to get my hair wet, my beard wet, the rest of my body wet. I soaked up everywhere, basically starting with my body, and then I added a little bit of shampoo, shampooed my hair, cleaned out my beard, and then I still had probably like a third of the tank full of water left, so at the end I cranked that thing open and used it to completely get all the soap off of me, and it actually worked pretty well. Now if you don't have facial hair or if you don't have long hair, the water's probably going to last you a lot longer, so if you do have any remaining water in the tank like we do right now, Best way to handle this is of course, just run it on high like I mentioned, use all that nice hot water. And they actually recommend turning this thing all the way open. And letting all the water drain out of the system. Eventually we will get to a point where the low water light is blinking. I thought I spilled way more water than this. All right, so the low water light is now blinking, which means the shower is about to end. 
And there you can hear there's no more water going through the pump. They recommend leaving this valve open and letting this thing run for about 15 seconds. That way you can clear all of the water out of the pump and out of the line. So I'll just finish wringing out this sponge. And then when there is nothing else coming out of here, go ahead and flip that switch off, flip the cover down, and now you can get this thing ready to stow away. So now I'm going to disconnect this thing from power. I will disconnect the sponge by twisting that in the opposite direction and simply popping that off. They do also give you a tip that if you have long hair, which I probably could have used, you can actually fill this thing up with water and just sort of spray it right out of this nozzle. Should we try that? This is something I haven't tried, but maybe we should try it. When I crack that open, you can hear that pressure. That is why I said not to screw the lid on too tight because that thing can definitely get stuck on there if you hulk it around. Let's see if I can do this without spilling a ton of water this time. All right, not as bad that time. Now we'll get this lid back on here. I'm gonna plug it back into power. All right, now I'm a little nervous about how much pressure is gonna be coming out of this thing, but let's see. They say that if you turn this nozzle slowly, it will just sort of spray out of here. Okay, not too bad. So this is obviously gonna consume water way quicker than if you are using the sponge, but if you have long hair or a long beard, you can get way more water flow simply by using that method. Should we turn on full blast just to see? Okay, that's pretty good. Not as explosive as I thought it might be, but yeah, that's a pretty cool little hack right there. Now that that hose is drained, Turn the pump off and make it a point to close that valve too, just to be safe. So now you're done showering, you wanna pack this thing away. I'm going to again unplug it. I'm gonna put that safety switch down. Now I will spin this collar to unlock it, push it down and the hose comes out just like that. Now it is a good idea to remove this lid and let it dry fully if you're going to be storing this thing. You of course don't want water and condensation just sitting inside of there. It could cause like mold and mildew, stuff like that. So I'll basically leave this thing sit out like that for a little while. And then once that is fully dry, you can take your hose, store it down inside of there. Any of the sponges that you may have, of course you want to wring them out. You can leave them a little bit moist and store them in a clean bag. The bags that these actually come in are resealable, so you could do that. I think since I plan on using this thing pretty regularly, I will basically just clean out the sponge and then tuck it right in the top there and screw that lid into place. I'll tuck that power cord back up inside the handle. Again, that is removable with the SAE connector here on the bottom and I'll stow this thing away until the next time I plan on using it. So that's a quick look at the Geyser Systems hot portable shower. If you guys have any questions on this thing, let me know in the comments down below. Again, this was just my initial test, but I like what I've seen so far, so I'm definitely gonna be bringing this thing on the road with me and I will actually show you guys how I use it in real time, actually showering with it once we are out on the road. Might have to like censor that or start a, uh, different account on one of those other platforms, if you know what I'm talking about. But for real, I think this is a pretty cool product. You can find them on their website and they did hook me up with a discount code. You can find that in the description down below. Or if you wanna see these things in person, you can also pick them up at places like REI. That's actually where I first saw Geyser Systems. And that to me is pretty cool that a small Colorado-based company has a product that is apparently tried and tested and they're able to sell them in big stores like REI. So pretty cool. If you wanna check them out, you can find them over on their website or at your local REI. Now stay tuned for when I use this thing while we're out on the road. If you guys wanna check out my public travel schedule, I'm going to be taking the truck to a lot of different expos this year. You can find that over on my website, cyproductions.com slash OAC for the outdoor adventure culture. As of now, I have confirmed that I will be at Overland Expo West in Flagstaff, Pacific Northwest up in Oregon, and Mountain West in Colorado. There's a good chance that you will see Geyser at some of those as well, and if they're not there, I will definitely have this thing if you guys wanna check it out in person. So come on out, say hi, hang out for a little bit, and believe that's all that we had for today. If you guys are new to this channel, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every week. As always, thanks for watching.
I'll talk to you in the next one.